Hi, welcome to Quick Start Tutorials. In this tutorial, we're going to talk about parsing your data. So to start off with, let's talk about a few basic concepts. So what does parsing do? Parsing allows you to create fields, extract information out of your data. So you might want to pull a specific piece of data out, like for example, a URL or a port number. So it also allows you to do additional things to that, for example, by grouping it, doing mathematical operations, average sums, whatever you need to do to that. And we have different types of parsing available. First, we have the regular parse that uses parse anchors. We have parse regex that allows you to use full-fledged regex to be able to pull the data out, as well as a predefined library of parsers. So let's get started and go right into the Sumo Logic UI. So if you watch our search tutorial, we remember this from last time, we can look at the last five minutes. So I'm going to do that to make things simple. And then I also want to look at the Apache access logs. So I can look at that by just clicking on a category here and I'll add that to my search. And then I also want to look at just the get statements. So this way we're looking at just the get statements in my Apache logs. Now what kind of things might I want to pull out of that? One of the easiest things to pull out is the URL. So we can see below here that it basically sets between the get and the HTTP. So why don't we select that? And now you'll see that there's a bunch of options, including parse the selected text. So I can just choose the text right here and then click to extract this value. So I clicked on that little bubble and I'll name this URL. Now when I rerun this, you'll see that we have a new field that was added that is being filled out with all the different URLs here below. Now I can actually pull out more than one field. So let's try to pull out another field in addition to the URL. And we can actually do that in a couple different ways. We can actually create another parse statement or we can combine the parse statements. So let's first try to do it in a separate statement. So I can select another bit of text here. and choose to parse out the status code. Now, when I run this, I'll see both the status code and the URL. Now, as you can see, these could actually be combined if we like. So I can either put the two parts here together or I can just select the whole thing here, which is probably the easiest to do. I'm going to choose the URL and the status code. And here we can see both of them out. So we can actually delete these other ones here. Now I have both the URL and the status code again with one single parse statement. Now, as you're experimenting with parse, you may find that you need to experiment a little bit with how to get out the variables correctly. Now let's say I put in a new parse statement here manually. That's not going to work. So I'm going to look for a string called foo and an asterisk. And I'm going to name that new field. Now the problem is that I won't get any output from this. Why? Because parse acts as a filter. So if the statements coming through, the messages coming through, don't match all the parses, it's, they're going to be dropped. Now we do have a way of preventing that, and this is especially important when you're experimenting. I can add no drop to the end here to any parsing statement, and it won't drop the fields that don't match. So I will have the field here, but if it doesn't match, it will be empty. So thank you for taking a look at this quick start tutorial on parsing, and we encourage you to take a look at the other tutorials available. Thank you.